on just like each and any and everything that I see. But now, but now, oh, I can be very slow. I can be everything slow. Amen. Amen. So, I just I just thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Two more testimonies. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've been asleep the entire I've been asleep on my face looking at the table. And he falls and just wakes you up. And this and your presence to it is just a beautiful thing. And this morning as it fell, I just, it felt like you know how when you're getting a massage on your shoulder, you know, pull your yeah. pull your arms and stuff like that. And that's what it's like. It's like the Holy Spirit weight fell on my shoulders and it just stretched it out. And I knew without even moving my arms that it wasn't gonna hurt. And it just fell, and I was so blessed. Once again, just I just enjoyed being in that presence. You always receive the word and that's what you give. And it, it was just a beautiful thing. And so true enough, I, mean, I didn't want to spend time raising my arm when I knew it was fixed. I was just wanted to be in the presence of the spirit as it that that heavily in this room. And so sure enough, when Josh stood up to speak, I raised my hand and you know moved my arm around and it was fine. Yeah. <laughs>
and that's going to be the play production that's coming in on the 22nd and my speaking part, and also she will be doing my production as well. Uh, please remember that you can hear about the great content that you can hear for the first um, each week. She will be here on Monday, uh, prior to the evening on Tuesday, Tuesday and Saturday is my speech, and then on Sunday the rest of the week. This Saturday there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be taking place here at the church, which is the 28th. The first is the girls' meeting will be here from 3.30 to 5. They're going to be giving special Sunday school projects to us. This is Mr. Cameron. There's going to be food and they come out and have fun and uh, after that from 5 to 6 p.m. Um, ages 7 and up, all the youth that's interested in going to the pastor, um, the food person will be here from 5 to 6. And at 6 p.m. downstairs in the fellowship hall, there will be the women's meeting and that is going to be the topic. And this, this Sunday, I'm going to be able to have all the women in my meeting um, for the first and the food and the women that is a month early. November the 17th is the 24th is the first anniversary for food um, month that is in Calvary. So if you can use the day to the next class, then they will be coming up with the food. Amen. Amen. Trying to carry on the work without our support. 
especially if he's representing us. Isn't that right? right. Amen. So I want you to be mindful now. Uh, my baby back there in the red shirt, he got a pen just for, for the mission. Come up here. Okay, because see, I can't move all these negative. Okay. <laughs> Davion is here for your valley meal or for your hometown meal or your football meal. And I made an error because today I said I could not participate in fast food meal, but I ended up putting in five dollars, so I owe more money because I don't want fast food. I have to pay for the for the hometown. So if you if you just gave it five dollars and you really don't go for hamburger place, you really owe me more than the Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. How many know the Lord is able? Amen. Hallelujah. Have you tried to stand up for yourself and is able? The song simply declares our God is able to be exceedingly abundantly abundantly and now for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. 
in the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, starting at the 57th verse. It says, Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, yes, Luke 9, 57. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you. I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes and holes and birds, birds, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now he, he, was, he was saying, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you wherever you go. But, but, but God is like, I don't even have an address. I don't even call it. And technically, I don't even have an address. The, the, the foxes have holes to lay their heads in, and, and the birds of the air have nests to rest in. But I don't, I don't even, I don't even have an address. I, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of ministry, and I don't even know where I'm going to lay my head at night. And you're saying that you want to follow me? Then he said to another. Now, see, now after, after Jesus says all this, then Jesus says to another, "Follow me." <laughs> And he said, but, but he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Lord, uh, uh, there, there's some things I mean, I'll, I'll follow you, but there's some things that I need to take care of first. And God says, well, let the dead bury the dead. Let, let, let the dead in sin bury the ones that are already dead. Going down to the 61st, 61st verse, it says, and another also said, Lord, I'll follow you, but let me first go say bye to all my friends and family. And then Jesus says to him, no man having put his hand to the plow and look, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We look back at a lot of things. We wonder about a lot of things. But I came to let you know today that your future holds way too much to look back at your life. There, there, there's too much going on in your future to look back at what you did before. There, 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 there's, there's too much going on in your life right now. There's too much that is going to happen in your life right now to look back at what happened in the past. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did this thing in Youth Night. We played this game. And I took, I, I divided them up into groups. I thought there was, there was three per group. Yeah, there was three per group. And, and one, one group had a banana and the other group had a banana. And, and we chopped, or well, I chopped the banana. Oh, Matt, he told me about this. <laughs> Chopped the banana up and into little pieces and everything. And I gave them some toothpicks. And I told them, I said, put the banana back together. Put the banana back together. How are we going to put the banana back together? Some bananas were cut into quarters. <laughs> some were, you know, round desk pieces. Put the banana back together. And they had all these toothpicks. And so they put the banana back together as best they could. Now, with the warmthness of their hands and, and the banana being in little, little pieces, they started to get mushy. And they put the banana together as best as they could put the banana back together. And so I said to them, I said, now see, look at this. This is your reputation that has been chopped up and taken apart. And now you're trying to put your reputation back together. You did your best to repair your reputation, but the damage has already been done. So what I want you to know today, regardless of what has happened in the past, and what you have done in the past, you can always repair what happened before. So the best thing that you can do is move on and push it, 
pushing going forward. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There is no reason for somebody to remind you of what you already know that you've done. There is no reason for someone to try to try to hold it against you about what you already did. You know what you already did. I'm not looking back at what I've done because I can't move forward if I'm looking backwards. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't keep a straight line if you're looking back. See that? See? See, back then there, there was an ox that was, that, was, that was in front of the plow, and you had to guide that ox. You had to keep that ox on track. If, you, if you're not looking where you're supposed to be going, that, that ox is following your direction, even though it's behind you. And if you're looking that way, it's going that way, and you're looking back, you don't have a straight line anymore. You've lost, you've lost the path that God has put you on because you're looking back at what happened before. I don't care about what happened before. You shouldn't care about what happened before. God doesn't care about what happened before. God is concerned about the path that you are laying straight ahead. Your future is too much to look back at your path. What I did 10 years ago has no bearing on where God is taking me. It has no bearing on it. But some people want to hold everything in your People tell me, hey, remember when you did this? Remember when you acted up like that? And they just put you in the music. And they acted up just like you acted up. But they want to throw it in your face. Remember what you did? Remember how you acted up? Girl, you was crazy that night. <laughs> but they was crazy right along with you. But they want to point out what you did. Right. So you can feel remorse in your spirit. That's right. God didn't hold you and hold that against you. You repented for that. And you asked God to forgive you for that. So that, so that has no bearing on where God is taking you right away. We get so caught up. Uh, and, and see, and the devil likes to bring stuff on us about things that we've done, things that we've said, how we acted, and all that stuff. God didn't forget about that. The church folks that won't let you live in <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the church folks that won't let you live stuff down. They will hold it against you until the day you die about what you did 35 years ago. Well, you know they did this. I don't, I don't know why, why they acted like they saying all this stuff. And they, they know they did this. Well, they got that right with God. They weren't supposed to get that right with you, but you can't have it to God. <laughs> if they got it right with the person that they did wrong to, then that's between you and them. They got nothing to do with you. You doing this because your life is messed up and you don't know where you're going. Because you're looking back. And now you're in somebody else's field. <laughs> We've got to understand that God is taking us to a higher level. And the level that God is taking us to, there is no reason to look back at what happened before. You know, because it's not going to do us any good because I can't get to the place that God is taking me if I'm looking back at what happened before. I can't get to where God has taken me if I'm thinking about how wrong you did me before. I can't get there because I'm caught, I'm caught up in 96 and it's 2013. <laughs> and you stuck in 96. I, 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 I don't understand that. We have to, as saints of God, we have to get past 
all that other stuff. Lord. Because see, we got a generation that's looking at us and they waiting to see us mess up. Okay. And see, so they can fall right behind us and say, well, our mom and dad and all the other saints in the church, they held stuff against people all the time. Why can't I hold it against you? That's what we did and we went to church every Sunday. We went to Bible study. My mom and daddy was in the choir and they still held stuff against people. So ain't that what you're supposed to do? Let me go sit down. I got some pork chops in the refrigerator that's, that's ready to go in the oven. So, so let, me, let, me go, let me go sit down. Y'all don't want to get all of this. So, what do we do when we got a generation? That's looking at us, and we're telling them you you need you need to go to church, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and you need to blah 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 blah. But then they look at us, and on the way home from church, <laughs> I can't stand for the song. <laughs> <laughs> They in the back seat like a little sponge, oh. just sucking it all. I'm gonna tell you one thing that happened with John. This little girl, I ain't gonna call her names. Little girl, she said, "Oh, she said, 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 she 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 looked at me up and down and turned around and walked away. I said, John, I don't want to be Yeah. 
See, Lord told me today, he said, don't get lost. Because this ain't a long message. Learn to confirmation. <laughs> Drop a white Tyson. But we have to be focused on where God is taking us. If we lose focus of where God is taking us, we've set ourselves up for the enemy to walk in. And the devil is constantly, constantly trying to remind us of things that have happened in the past. Yeah. You know, have you ever, have you ever had an embarrassing moment? <laughs> and, and, and you think about that embarrassing moment. Everybody else has forgotten about that embarrassing moment that you had. Nobody remembers that you tripped up the stairs or anything like that. But you think about it and you're like, oh, that was so embarrassing. I can't believe I tripped up the stairs or, or anything. People have forgotten about those little embarrassing moments. But we remember those little embarrassing moments. And we're like, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> but people have forgotten about it. But the devil will remind us of stuff. Yeah. And constantly pepper us with it. Yeah. And we feel about this big. And we're like, God don't want me. Why does God want me? And I've done all of this. Well, God has thrown what you did in the sea of forgetfulness. Right? And he hasn't brought it up to you again. Mm. The enemy has come to bring it up to you. He thank you. Know you. <laughs> he thinks, come on. Come on. Yeah. And we just beat ourselves up on it. We beat our, I mean, we literally take an aluminum bat sometimes and we just hit ourselves constantly in the ribs and the side and the leg. And pretty soon we have become crippled over our past. Yeah. Yeah. And God is saying, I don't even want you to think about your past. I want you to move backwards and upwards. Because a lot of cases, our past has made us who we are. In a good way or a bad way, it has made us who we are. We have become untrustworthy people because we gave ourselves to somebody and they and, 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 and they broke that trust. So now we can't trust anybody in the world because we think everybody is like that one lousy person that we gave our life to and they told us that they were going to be there for us. They told us they were never going to hurt us. They told us that they were, they were just going to just be the utmost. I'm going to help you do this. I'm going to help you do that. You're not going to have to worry about this. You're not going to have to worry about that. And then the minute you find out that that promise was broken, then everybody is that way. And it has ruined us for the next relationship. I'm not just I'm not I'm not just talking about male, female, married, all that stuff. Any relationship, I'm talking about a friendship, it ruins it. And then and then our kids try to have these type of relationships with people, and we don't let our kids have those relationships because we sabotage their relationship yeah. with someone else because of the hurt that we felt, and it becomes a vicious cycle that we have put ourselves in, and it's like a cyclone, and we have it's a whirlwind that we have wrapped ourselves around with, and God is saying, let me break this cycle that you have created in your life, because you continue to look back at what happened before. We build up walls around ourselves. First, they start out as plaster walls. Then we get some mortar, put some mortar and some brick up there. And we let nobody into our world. Because if I let you into my world, there's a wall that you might hurt. And if you hurt me, it took me years to recover from that hurt that happened before. And I'm still not over that. But if I let you into if I let you into my world, 
and you hurt me, then it's going to be a double win. I don't, I don't know if I ever need you to get out of here. Come on, come on. But we have got to learn how to trust again. Because we're looking back. And God is trying to put us in building relationships. Oh my God, Lord, this ain't even in my own house, but I'm good. God is trying to God is trying to put us in healthy relationships with healthy people, with a healthy understanding of God and a healthy understanding of what we need. <laughs> But if we don't let those healthy people into our messed up world, then we can't get the health that we need. That's right. That's right. But see, the scripture says that no one man in the Bible, and that means that you aren't supposed to be all by yourself all the time. I mean, there are times when you do need to be alone and be by yourself. But no man is an island where you just constantly by yourself. Sometimes I wish I was on an island. <laughs> And 
then it was over. Yeah. And then that became the norm. Mm -hmm. And then they thought that's how it was supposed to be. I'm eating, you want something? The money, the body, the food, the companionship, and then it was over. And they thought that's how it was supposed to be. Then so as time moves on, we know that's what everybody is. Everybody's happy. It's just a bargaining chip. But God said, I didn't create you for that. There's more to you than just the bargaining chip. I, I, heard, I heard somebody say that I'm not your laptop. <laughs> Look at this. Now, a laptop, people go on their laptop and they put whatever they want on their laptop. They go whatever website they want to go to. And they end up putting junk and viruses get into those laptops. Yeah. I'm not your laptop. I'm not going to let you just throw your junk and your virus and corrupt me. Yes. There's more to me than that. Yes. Yes. So what did you say to that? 
say one more time. No matter what. You go on the river. Who is that? Who's the battle? Who is this the battle to belong to today? Let's follow. Touch now, 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 touch now